Okay, so Geekworm recently sent me this NAS case for a Compute Module 4 and I've just started ripping these DVDs uh, to be able to use them with a Plex server and uh, at the moment I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 with a DVD writer but I figured I'd do the whole lot and show how it was set up. I watched the first season of 24 years ago and I've had season 2 and 3 on DVD for a very long time just never done anything with it because it's more hassle as my only DVD player is a Wii U but I've got used to the streaming experience of things like Netflix and Amazon Prime so if I scroll down to Plex on my Apple TV but you can use this on Roku, Amazon Fire, all sorts of different platforms let's click on that and you can see that it's come up as recently added in TV shows there's other content on here as well that you can flick through. There's quite a lot of free content on Plex as well. I'm not a subscriber, uh, but if I click on 24, the experience is great. So you can see with the episodes I can flick through, I can get a description of the episodes. I can even check what other actors have been in. So if I click on an actor, I get the filmography and you can see various different content that they've done. Super impressive. So let's have a look in the box. So I've got a heat sink and a thermal pad and some screws and this very neat looking case with a micro switch button on the front, USB 2, micro SD slot, two HDMI outputs on the back, Ethernet, a couple more USB sockets and an audio output jack and obviously this is the power input and it feels nice and solid. Oh and also a cool little display on the top as well. So I've removed six screws and the front plate and you can see this just pulls out and we have the board and you can see how the display is mounted and on the base we've got NVMe and SATA M.2 drives and you can see there's two different sizes for the NVMe drive. So this is the kit on their website and as it says doesn't come with a compute module 4 or a drive. So let's click on some of these images. So it has fan sockets, but I intend to use this silent with just the heatsink. It's got a little coin battery holder. They show an antenna. Now my Compute Module 4 isn't Wi-Fi, so uh, I'm going to be using Ethernet anyway, which is better for a Plex server. So it's a 0.96 inch OLED. They recommend a 5 volt, 4 amp power supply, but I'm going to use the 5.1 volt, 3 amp, which is the Raspberry Pi official one. If you haven't got the right size drive, you can always print out one of these adapters that goes from 30 to 80. Actually, when I first saw the hole in the middle, I thought it was one for a 2242, but uh, it doesn't line up because it isn't actually a hole for that reason. It's only at the end here. Now you can use the OTG mode to flash this with a Pi, but it's much easier if you've got a caddy to be able to put your drive into. I don't need to secure that in place. I can now just plug that into my Pi 4 the USB cable so let's open that Raspberry Pi imager choose OS Raspberry Pi OS other I'm going to go for the 64-bit version with a desktop environment choose storage this is my NVMe drive and hit right and yes so I can remove the compute module 4 from this little HDMI inboard which is also a Geekworm product and I use thermal paste and I should be able to just keep it as is because it's the same design. So let's flip this off. Oh, that's moved around a bit. Actually, I'm going to take this off because I don't want to push down on the CPU. There we go. We can get back on. And four of these long screws. There we go. So it definitely looks very neat. I don't really need the keyboard one in there because I could remotely control it. But uh, it's nice having full size HDMI's in the back. You can see I've got an audio cable in. So let's switch this on. We have a little red light and a blue light and a green light. And my monitor's waking up. So I'll do an update and get it into Raspberry Pi OS for the first time. Okay, so that's all booted up with the familiar screen. Let's pop this USB stick in so that I can transfer the videos I've already backed up. Okay, let's open that up. And you can see I've got a folder named 24 here. So let's just copy these files. 
and pop them in home and videos. And I've also got on this stick some text. So let's copy that over to the desktop. So now if I add my DVD writer, so I need to plug this into separate power because the USB socket isn't enough to power it on its own, this particular drive. Uh, and let's plug in the USB into the back here. Grab a disc, so I've already backed up disc one, so I'm gonna need disc two. And let's pop that in. Close it up, should get a green light. And then we need the text from this DVD rip file. So I need to copy this, which installs libdvd, which is basically a codec to be able to play back DVDs. And also Handbrake will need it to back them up. So right click and copy, Control Alt T to open a terminal and paste that in. Now I've just done this, but I wasn't screen capturing. So you can see it says it's upgraded, but it will prompt you a couple of times uh, and you just pick yes, and that will all install it. I'm not sure if I need to reboot to be able to play a DVD, so let's see what happens. So let's press the Windows key and start typing VLC, and let's launch that, and see what it does. So open disk, DVD, and play. Yeah, so that's working fine. So I can quit that and then go back to this and I want to install Plex. So if I copy all of this, and again open a terminal and paste it in. Okay, so that's finished. Uh, I also need to install Handbrake, uh, which I guess I could probably do from Add Remove. I'd normally use PyApps, but I haven't put that on here yet. Uh, so let's just type in Handbrake on the Raspberry Pi store. There you go. So there's Handbrake and click Apply. And click OK. And close all this down. And let's see if Plex is already on there. Yeah, so there's Plex Media Server. And I just need to log in, so I've already created an account before. But it is a free one, I don't pay for this. And let's sign in. Plex Media Server runs on the computer where you keep your media. Plex scans your media, automatically organises it and makes it beautiful. Play your media on any screen with your favourite Plex app. And you can see they offer options to be able to do the paid for service, which looks pretty decent. So I'm going to call mine Pi CM4. And you can access your media outside of your home. I'll leave that checked, but I'm not going to do it in this video. So let's add library. TV shows. And next. And then browse for my folder. Remember I put it in my video folder. If we go back, home, leap SP video, and scroll down to videos, and we can add that, and done. So if we click on more, we can see Pi CM4 is here, and you can see the four videos that are in there. And we can scroll down, and we've got the same sort of access as we had before, but let's back up some more. So let's close Plex, open up Handbrake, open source, and click on the disk here on the left, and open. And while it's scanning my disk, let's go into that video folder and just copy the naming. So there's a particular way that uh, Plex likes things to be named and you can see I've got it here, 24-series02, episode 4. Let's close all that. So this is the title one. This is the first episode on this disk, which is episode 5. So let's delete this. Pop that in, but I need to change it to episode 5. 
I'm changing the video to MPEG-4, which just makes it a bit more compatible. Seems to import easier into Plex on that setting. There may be some better settings. Have a look in the comments, see if other people have suggested. Hit Add to Queue. And let's do another one as well. So episode two on this disc, which is gonna be episode six. And let's add that to the queue. And then just hit start. And it will perform its magic. So come back when that's all done. It will give you an estimated time which counts up until it works out how long it's gonna be. Okay, so it's all finished, so I can close this down, and you can see I've now got six episodes in there. Now, if I just add .mp4 on the end, otherwise they don't seem to get recognized. That's both of those done. Now if I open up Plex, I'm not sure if it does it initially or you have to refresh. Let's see what happens. So if I hit more, PyCM4, so four episodes at the moment, scan library files, and we now got six. Now if we have a look at the power, you can see that it's running between 2.4 and 2.1 watts at the moment. Not sure if it will make a difference if I unplug this. Yep, still the same. Now we know from earlier on in the video that uh, if the Pi is on and it's on my monitor, it works on my TV. Uh, and Plex server doesn't need to be running as in a window, so you can have it in this state because it starts up automatically. But also, if I go into Raspi config, sudo raspi-config, and go to system options, boot, and then if we just get it to log in to text console, you can see here automatically logged in. You can do it where you log in manually yourself. Uh, you could do that over remote access, but I'm just gonna get it to log in on its own. So now if I do finish and reboot, it reboots like this. And if I unplug the HDMI and the three and a half mil, so all I've got in is my ethernet cable uh, in fact, I don't even need my mouse and keyboard and also my power supply. And my power supply is now showing between 1.5 watt and 1.8 watt. So very, very low power. Congratulations to New Zealand for winning their first match. Right, so back to Apple TV and Plex. Then if we scroll down to TV shows, Pi CM4, you can see six episodes. And if I wanted to start playing one, Everything's working fine. Obviously a bit grainy as it's DVD quality, but I'll take it. Okay, so very pleased with this case. You might have noticed I haven't got the display working. Uh, there isn't any instructions on the site yet. I guess maybe it's a new product and uh, it's not there. I'll find out and uh, if I get it enabled, maybe I'll do it in a shorts video. But for now, if I want to monitor, I can use Raspberry Pi Helper. I've enabled SSH and you can see here, this is the Pi in the middle of the screen, CPU, memory and disk. If I click on it, I can see that the temperature is a nice cool 42 degrees. I've got 110 gig spare space. Okay, so very impressed with this case. I'm going to finish backing up the rest of this series. Hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.